Good morning rockers as you can see I'm still in Austria I haven't made the leap just yet the house is nearly finished I uh, just got to finish painting a couple of rooms do a little bit of a touch-up here and there and we're gonna sell the house and we'll be on our way to Sligo County in Ireland anyway I'm sure you're not that interested in my personal life how about uh, we talk a little bit about sound and if it's all right we'll talk about what you need to get started when I say started I mean the absolute minimum if you've got absolutely nothing but you want to get started on uh, putting together some sound some beats uh, some rhythms then certainly I would recommend that you have to buy yourself a drum machine um, I know a lot of people want to use software it's much cheaper and easier to take everything off the internet or even just grab loops samples uh, and make your rhythms that way sure you can do that if you want but you're not really going to learn a hell of a lot about making a rhythm you know if you're just using other people's loops and other people's samples all you're really doing is you're, you're sequencing a loop but you're not really learning how to make a rhythm all right so what I would recommend is really just go to your local hock shop. Uh, a hock shop is one of those places where you buy second-hand gear or have a look online. Maybe even you can buy a new drum machine pretty cheap these days. And when I say drum machine, I'm not talking about a sampler. I'm not talking about the MPC series or anything from Alesis or anything like that. I'm talking about, uh, you know, a, a doctor rhythm. You know, something small, like a, a Boss drum machine. Uh, the very first drum machine I ever used was a Dr. Rhythm. I was told that the Beastie Boys used it on one of their albums, and for some reason I thought that was super cool. The unit itself probably cost about $25 today. Uh, maybe in the past it was worth a bit of money. But these little palm-sized uh, drum machines, very easy to sequence. And um, once you get started with them, you know, learning where to put your kick, where to put your snare. You know, that's the sort of stuff where you, you put together a basic rock drum ro rhythm and uh, all of a sudden you're starting to write music. I know it doesn't sound like music yet because the drum machine is so cheap and inexpensive and the sounds are probably cheap and inexpensive. But uh, it's a very good start to figuring out where do you want your kick? You want your kick on every beat? I know I don't. Uh, when I do dub and reggae music, I put my snare drop on the three beat. Most people when they do rock music, the snare falls on the second beat. But of course it's up to you. You know, you're not going to revolutionize music by making different kinds of drum beats. Uh, but it's a very good place to start. And through sequencing rhythms, you can also start to figure out how to sequence, uh, say, bass lines and key lines. Uh, sequencing reggae keys is the easiest of all. But of course, you can sequence melodies and things. Not on a drum machine. The drum machine will give you the basic um, building blocks to know how to do it properly. <laughs> Causing problems. You're a troublemaker. Alright, it's not as peaceful as I was hoping it would be. Come on. Bela's obviously making a lot of noise. <laughs> Alright. Ah, there's the car. So go out. Uh, have a look on eBay or have a look on uh, uh, one of these cheap stations. Oh, you can park your car if you like and uh, get yourself a very cheap drum machine it doesn't matter which brand it doesn't matter which kind they're all gonna sound pretty shit uh, when they're cheap they're not using real samples they're using MIDI and things like that but just because it sounds bad doesn't mean it'll end up uh, being useless or anything the skills you can learn with your sequencer 
are going to be worth uh, transferring to other samplers and sequencers. Drum machine is just the most basic form of se sequence I can think of. These walking videos are going to be a bit tricky if there's people around all the time. Uh, hopefully I'll be in the something of a, a new position by the time you see me next. Uh, maybe the next video will be actually made in Sligo or in Ireland, maybe or just before we leave at the airport. All right, I just want to reiterate uh, what you should do. Go out and get yourself a cheap drum machine. It doesn't matter which brand, it doesn't matter which kind. Just something where you can sequence the drum rhythm. Uh, so nothing that's got all of the, the presets for like samba and rock and tango. Sure, you can play with that kind of thing, but if you want to sequence uh, music, start with sequencing a drum machine. Uh, after, you might find that, you know, if you get a better drum machine, maybe it has stereo out. Maybe you can pan the kick to one side and the snare to the other side, and then have the kick and the snare come out of two separate channels on the drum machine. So the kick can go to one effect, and uh, the snare can go to another effect. So maybe you want to put a, a, a nice tight reverb on the kick, Maybe you want to put a, a very sharp digital delay on the snare. Um, it's up to you. Some drum machines, of course, can have separate outs for every sound. And if you have eight outs on your drum machine, uh, you got a world of fun. Because what you can do is you can send out MIDI signals from the drum machine uh, in order to control another machine outside. So you could have your drum machine playing a piano unit. You could have uh, one of the MIDI signals out uh, playing a synthesizer or some other sort of small kit sound effect. I do not advocate doing everything online and I do not advocate doing everything on a computer uh, because simply you're going to miss out on the tactile functions and listening instead of looking at your music. So when you hit a drum pad or you sequence a drum rhythm you're really listening to see whether or not your sequence worked out the way you wanted it to. Um, when you're drawing a picture of music on a computer screen and you're putting dots along a, a map uh, to map out your drum beats, you're still making beats and there's no question whether or not that'll be good. But uh, you're going to miss out on a lot of the, the physical tactile sensations of touching the buttons and maybe turning up a snare or turning down a, a hi-hat. You know, all these little variations you can do. Uh, yeah, it takes longer, it takes more time. But by the time you've mastered a couple of drum machines, going onto a sequencer that uses samples or a sampler that can be sequenced uh, is really just a very small step once you've got the basics on knowing how to use a drum machine. So, uh, as I said, I'll put a link down for the Dr. Rhythm. I'm not saying it's a good drum machine, but if you find one that has uh, more than a stereo out, then you're already in luck. Even if you get stereo out and headphones out, you could possibly use that as four outputs. Uh, it's up to you how you want to use it, but just to begin with, it's about sequencing. Learning how to put a, a kick, and then a hat, and then a snare, and then a hat, and then a kick, and then a hat, and then a snare, and knowing which sequence you want to put them in. Uh, don't worry about the sound quality to begin with, because you're just learning and uh, even for me, uh, once you, you sort of sequence a really nice rhythm, you just change the sounds or the samples that you're using uh, in order to make the, the drum kit sound more sort of pleasurable to the ear. So once you've got your MIDI patterns worked out, it's really easy after that. All right, thanks for listening. Hope I didn't chew your ear off about learning how to sequence a drum machine. Uh, but certainly, I do advocate hands-on, doorless music production. If you can get your hands on a small sampler, uh, I think it's the 404 or something, that's quite good. Uh, or get your hands on another drum machine that you can hook up to the first drum machine. You can actually start sequencing different sounds from the one box. It sounds a little bit uh, complex to begin with, 
and I will give some kind of tutorial on uh, how to sequence your MIDI but once you've sequenced MIDI you can send those signals out to any other sound device which accepts MIDI so you can be playing synthesizers, bass lines, keyboards, maybe even synth guitar lines from uh, virtual, synth, uh, virtual guitars or virtual cabs. That's definitely something worth looking into. Before you know it, you'll be making music all by yourself. You'll have your, your drum machine, your bass line and your, your keyboard line. There's not too much to do after that. So get started with the drums. I think a lot of producers, a lot of especially bedroom people like me, we love to start with the drum rhythm. And if you spend, I don't know, a year or so playing with drum beats, you'll be a master of it within a year. I'm sure you get a pretty good idea on how to uh, you know, sequence techno as opposed to how to sequence a dub tune. You figure out how to sequence rock and roll as opposed to uh, you know, tech step or something. Then you really start listening to music and figuring out things like time signatures. What is 4-4? Four, four? What is 3-4? Uh, That's a waltz. But anyway, you, you'll get a hang of it by playing around with the drum machine. Some of the drum machines too, you can uh, make a basic rhythm and then change the way the rhythm plays, whether it be a samba or a tango or a foxtrot or something changing the time signature of your original beat so you can really play around you can mess with a drum machine and you can make it into something very special uh, there was one DJ I heard of I don't remember his name but he played with six drum machines sequenced together this was in Adelaide so he used six drum machines all sequenced daisy chained into MIDI so each drum machine was controlling the next drum machine and all he did was filter uh, the bass lines and the, uh, the heavy bottom end. It's a fun performance. All right, thanks for tuning in. It looks like the, the whole village is awake already. Thanks for having a look at uh, more bass workspace. I'll see you next week with a little something different. Thanks for tuning in.